this is the organigram of the of the of DGT, uh, with all the language departments here on this side, and then there is the terminology coordination unit, just to show you uh, who, how many units we serve. Okay. So, DGT has a terminology framework since 2012, uh, wherein the terminology work is acknowledged as a core activity in DGT. This was a very big uh, uh, achievement to, to have this, because uh, this, this meant actually that there are dedicated terminologists working in the language <coughs> departments. Previously, translators only did it in their free time, which they never had. So, <laughs> it was more like a hobby, after hours. So, with the terminology framework, um, it's now official that uh, everybody has to do terminology work and that they have to provide enough human resources uh, for it. So, this terminology framework covers the essential elements, the actors, the resources, the planning and monitoring, the tools, the training, and the cooperation with external shareholders, like uh, stakeholders, sorry, stakeholders, like other institutions, uh, other EU institutions, or external experts, or freelancers, and such. So I'm going to go a little bit into detail on, on these uh, essential elements. So the terminology work in um, in DGT, the main actors are. Uh, the Terminology Coordination Unit, which manages the centrally coordinated uh, terminology projects. They provide or we provide training. We coordinate the outsourcing terminology work and we pro participate in interinstitutional fora. Then there are the terminologists in each language department and they manage the data in our terminology database YATA. I guess everybody knows what YATA is, hopefully. Uh, it's the EU's interinstitutional terminology database and it's available to the public as well, not just for internal translators. So they are managing data there, the terminologists, and they also provide support for the translators, for their translators. And then there are the translators, who are the end users of uh, terminology data, and they also provide feedback on what is in YATE and what the terminologists are working on. And of course, they are doing basic terminology work, because as I mentioned, two terminologists, 50 translators, not everything can be done by those two terminologists. So the translators have to, have to carry out basic terminology work as well. And then there are the managers, and they are the ones who ensure that there are actually human resources in every language department to cover the terminology work need, needed to be done. And they also monitor uh, the progress of, uh, of the annual working program. So they work together then to achieve these uh, targets. Okay. So the annual work program, as I already mentioned it, um, there are central and departmental, so there is one for the whole of DGT and there are separate ones for all the language departments, uh, but they have common uh, basis uh, because they need to uh, uh, take into account the commission priori Commission's priorities. Uh, they are always formulated uh, in October, November, uh, and they are valid for the next year. And then there are translators' needs. They always uh, collect these translators' needs. Uh, the translators are telling them where is a gap in YATE, uh, where we have to work more in this language or that language. Gaps in YATE, and then domains where consolidation is needed in YATE. Consolidation is um, the maintenance work, so to say, in YATE, because YATE is a very huge database, so it needs to be constantly maintained. And since it was actually uh, established from uh, seven different terminology databases 
uh, in, uh, in the past, there are many duplicates in Yate. So consolidation is, uh, is always, always uh, a priority uh, at DGT. Okay, so the work program is mainly achieved by projects, but projects are also prepared and launched uh, to cover ad hoc translation needs. So whenever something comes up uh, and it's not actually in, in, the, in the work program, uh, we still deal with it because translators need to translate and they need to have the, the necessary terms. So, uh, what kind of projects do we have? We have proactive or pro parallel projects. That means proactive or parallel to the translation job. So, when the translation job, jobs comes in, uh, we start working on the terminology. If we are lucky, then we can actually work in advance if we have uh, an advanced copy. But usually we don't because these are sensitive documents, so they, they don't really just give us their drafts. Okay. There are post-translation projects, that means that it's after the translation job was already done. And, but they are always prepared in view of future translation needs. So it's not just that of stock taking what was done in this uh, translation job, but also to see whether the terms in that actual translation job are maybe uh, useful for future translations. And then we have consolidation project as a project as I explained in Yate, and we have them thematic projects uh, uh, which are targeted upda updates in Yate. Whenever we notice that something is missing in Yate, or when we when we see that uh, um, basic terminology or very specialized terminology is missing, then then we uh, do these thematic projects. So these are the the project types uh, that we do. And then uh, we have, of course, we are doing many things manually still. Uh, I think that's never going to change in terminology, and I also hope, because the human brain is <laughs> our biggest asset. Uh, but we have tools um, which help our work. Well, first and foremost is the Yata terminology database, and then we use terminology extraction, extraction tools, uh, but only actually recently. Uh, so we do a lot of manual extraction still. And then we have the term-based management tools to prepare terminology for our translators in the CAT environment. And then we use Excel files as well. Everybody loves them. They are very useful and uh, they are very easy to handle. So uh, we haven't given up on Excel files. Good. So, as I already mentioned, Yate, I would like to take the opportunity a little bit to promote the new one. It's actually just a new interface. I think that you, are, you might have already seen it, um, but it was uh, released in February this year. And it, it's, it's actually the, uh, the result of... Uh, uh, six years of work actually uh, in DGT, uh, the renewal of the interface. So this is how it looks now, and this is the new interface. This is this is available to everybody. You can either log in or you can use it uh, without logging in. And um, as you can see, it's a huge database. Uh, the number of entries, well. This uh, number is actually from, uh, from two weeks ago, so that's uh, 1.0 million entries and uh, we have uh, 7.9 uh, million terms and as you can see there were 1.1 million searches in that week alone for Yata. And Yata is queried from all over the world actually, mostly from the European Union territory, but also from, uh, from Malaysia, from South America, from everywhere really. Okay. So this is how it looks after you run a search for commission. 
Um, this is now a, a very clean and modern interface, I think. And, um, and you have all the basic information already here on this, uh, on this uh, screen, if you wish. And then what is very new is actually that you can run a, an expanded search which means that you can search in, in, um, in other fields, not just in the term fields. Previously it was only possible to search for terms, so equivalents. And now you can search actually for, uh, for any type of text bit that is present in Yata, which might come in handy, for example, for this term, this source stream, this is not existing yet in Yata, but if I want to know what it called in German, then I can run this text search, uh, and then I can see that uh, there are there is the same context actually a translation uh, from the same legal act, both in English and German present in the in the database, so that I know that uh, source stream is actually translated as Stoffstrom in German. Whether that's correct or not, a terminologist has to decide it, but it's present in the database, so that's the first ID at least uh, that you can use. Okay. So, sorry. So, um, external users, as I mentioned, uh, can access this database uh, themselves. Uh, there are only a um, couple of thousand entries which are not visible to the general public, they are sensitive data, but otherwise it's the same for internal and external uh, translators. Transla uh, external translators can also download the whole database or download just parts of it. Um, or if you are IT savvy, uh, there is an API now with Yata, so you can actually connect your tool uh, to Yata via this API. Okay, so uh, the, back to the terminology framework because it said that we are also providing training. Uh, but we are providing actually quite uh, a, a couple of types. Uh, there are internal trainings by internal trainers. For example, uh, Yata hands on training courses, how to update information in Yata. Um, this is mostly provided for terminologists, but we are also providing uh, internal training to our translators. How to use Yata, what are the basic uh, principles of Yata, what are the basic principles of terminology actually. So these are internal trainings by internal trainers. We have also internal training by external trainers. There's an, um, well, it's suspended now, but there was until recently introduction to terminology. It was held by university professors, but one of them has retired, so we are looking for, uh, for a new provider there. And then we have external training like the terminology summer school. So this, these are available both for translators and terminologists as well. Okay. And then, um, we are also organizing training for different tools, new tools, that we are testing ourselves. So before we test a new tool, then we organize a training to know what it's about and how to, how to actually use it. And then we start testing because, uh, yes, we have also realized that there are a lot of um, um, support tools uh, on the market but we need to test them before we know that they are actually useful to our purposes. So we do that and then before uh, we are really starting, uh, we organize webinars or we invite speakers to introduce us to these tools and then um, um, we start the testing. Okay, oops. And now it disappeared. Okay, good. Um, so, the, uh, to sort of cap it off, uh, the backbone of our terminology work is uh, the acknowledged rules, like the terminology framework that I mentioned uh, previously, but also the, 
the handbook for, for YATA work. There is a, a, a very extensive, uh, almost 100 pages long uh, handbook for, for YATA work. And it has also language annexes. So that means that rules for the languages uh, are detailed one by one how to do it in that specific language in YATA, how to do the research, how to port, how to cite uh, sources and such. So these are our acknowledged rules and we have agreed workflows. Um, for example, the planning of the annual work with the annual work programs and then the, the constant monitoring by our managers um, and then we have documents uh, for terminologists with checklists what they, are, what they have to take into account whenever they are working on something and there are also checklists for terminology coordinators such as myself um, and all, all these uh, workflows then um, how to deal with term bases and how to maintain the terminology database and the term bases uh, are also in these category and then we have uh, communication channels which are sort of standardized we, we use standardized mails for example and we have shared collaborative sites we have dis discussion boards and interinstitutional language wikis so all these um, to ensure that uh, we are taking into account the views of everyone translators, terminologists, from this institution, from that institution, from external users, from external experts, uh, from, uh, from internal experts, from other directorates general, you know, like um, uh, from policy uh, directorates uh, and such. So uh, we use these channels to, to sort of uh, cooperate in, in this way.